So I want to show you how to cut and key a model in Blender for 3D printing. And I'm going to use a little part of my uh, steampunk airship here to show you how. But before I do that, I want to show you a few changes I've made to my copy of Blender that make 3D modeling for 3D printing so much easier. So we start by here going to Edit, Preferences, and uh, under Navigation, Auto Perspective by default is checked on. Check that sucker right off, and I'll show you why. If you're uh, working on something, and you're zoomed in real close, right? And you click on a model, if auto perspective is checked on, it's going to snap to perspective mode. And where are you now in the model? Who knows? I can't tell. So you got to zoom out, you got to reorient yourself, get, get back to work. And you may not even want perspective, so you got to turn it off, then you got to re. It's a pain in the butt. So if I want perspective mode on, I'll turn it on by hand. Thank you very much. The other thing is, over here, in scenes, Blender comes by default set to metric. And I know we hate metric. Metric sucks. Whatever. Everything in 3D printing is in metric. It's just easier if you get used to it. It's not that hard. And in fact, Google has this little widget here. If you put in millimeters to inches, this little widget will pop up. And anything you type in here in inches will pop up over here in millimeters. It's quick, easy to convert. And after a while, you start to get used to it. You find out it's not that big a deal. So, But the other thing is, while Blender is set up in millimeters, it comes by default to meters, which is just way too big for 3D printing. You want to change that to millimeters. Now, those two things might just be my preference. You don't have to do them. Do them if you want, whatever. But this is vitally important. Over here, the unit scale. By default, Blender is set to 1. What will happen is if you model at that scale and you bring stuff as an STL, into your slicer, it'll come in as microscopic if it'll come in at all. I've had Cura reject the model because it just says it's too small. Um, so you change this unit scale to 0 0.001, everything will pop into your slicer at the size you modeled it at. Which for me is very important because I like to model things in pieces. Like this little rocket engine here, this is one piece. This is another piece. This little hanger here is a third piece. And then this little turbine here is actually two pieces and I'm gonna print them all separately and then glue them together so that I don't have to go crazy with supports I print with almost no supports thanks to this method and the fact that I use the um, bullseye fan duct on my ender 3 almost no supports maybe like one or two percent of the time I might use supports but it's very rare I almost don't need it slow down the printing a little bit use the fan duct forget about supports. Save time, save plastic. Okay, so enough about that. Now, I'm going to show you how to uh, cut and key this little part right here. So let's get rid of this big model. We don't need it anymore. And we'll open up the balloon hold. Now, I'm going to hide this by pressing H. Now, here's a little part that I want to show you how to cut and key. Now, we could try and print this with this end facing the bed, but then you see this this little ring here would be in midair, and all of it, all, just a little tiny bit here would touch the bed, and you would get a lot of spaghetti. It wouldn't work. So, what I do is I cut and key. Now, this little part might not need a key, but I'm going to show you how to use how to make a key with this part, just so you can see. So I'm going to unhide the cutter over here in Collections. And all the cutter is, is it's just a box. It's just a box that encapsulates half of the model. You'll see I line things up with the Z-axis guide here, um, just so I can get half of the model. And it doesn't have to be perfectly on center, but close to center is good. Okay, so now I have this box set in the middle. I'll select the model. I'll go to Boolean. It's already set to deference, which is what you need. I like to use the eyedropper tool. You select the cutter, hit apply, and then I will hit X to delete the box. And there you go. Look, it's cut it perfectly in half. Now, you want to go File, Save As. This is really important. Don't save over your original. So we'll go in here and we'll save this as one. Right? Here we go. We've got to save this one. Now let's go back. Open recent. We'll go back to the original one. Now here's where some magic happens. Hit tab to go into the edit mode of the box. Select these four vertices. 
and then just drag them over to cover the other half of the model. Now this part did not move. It's still exactly centered on the model, but this other half did. Um, now I would like to, I select all, I will go to mesh, normals, recalculate the outside. There isn't much a change in 2.8, but in, 2 point, in the earlier versions of 2.8, there was a change. I don't know if it's strictly necessary to do that, but I do it out of habit. Okay, now you have the other half of the model covered. You select the model, go to modify, boolean, deference is already selected. I like to use the eyedropper tool, select the box, hit apply, select the box, delete, and now we've perfectly cut the other piece. So now we'll go file, now make sure you hit save as, don't save. If you save over it, you'll have problems. You wanna save as. So now we'll change this to two. Okay, whoops. Let's rename this as two. That'll be important. I'll show you why in a second. Save again. File. Now I'm going to open recent. I'm going to go back to part one. I like to do the cut, the, the keying in the part one. It doesn't really matter. I could have done it in part two. Let's change that. Okay, now let's go file, append. We're going to go into part two. We'll go into object, and there's two. And look, it pops in in the exact right place. Because you didn't move anything in either files, it's perfectly lined up. So I'm going to select 2, and I'm going to press H to hide it. And I will move the 3D cursor approximately where I want the key. I will go File, I will go Add, Mesh, Cube. Now at the moment, the cube is 2,000 millimeters. So it's so big, it's encompassing the entire scene. That's why you can't see it at the moment. So we're going to... Type in five to get it five millimeters, and there it is. Now, this is the y-axis, the green, so we want to make that a little longer. Let's try 15. That looks good. Here's the x-axis, the red. So I'm going to go up a little, not too much. We'll go to eight. That seems fine. Now, here's something else important. If you cut the slot for the key the same size you're going to print the key, you're going to have problems. The key won't fit. you got to give yourself a little extra room. So I like to do 0.15 of a millimeter. Now, you may have to experiment with this. With your setup, it might be a little different. Maybe your filament, your printing temperature, or whatever might change things just a little bit. Experiment, see what works for you before you do a big project. Do a test. Maybe 0.15 is too much, or maybe it's too little. You mean, you know, 18, whatever. But make sure you give yourself a little space. Otherwise, you're going to have to sit there and sand and file to get it to fit. Okay, so now we've increased the size of our key. We're going to select our model, go back into our modifiers, go back to our friend the Boolean. It's already set to deference. Select the key, hit apply. Now if I hide it with H, you'll see it's cut a perfect rectangular slot for it. So let's go over here to our collections. I'm going to hide part one, and I'm going to reveal part two and the key. Let's change that. It says cube. Let's change it to key. I like everything named nice and concise. It helps you figure out what's going on when you have 100 million things in there. Uh, if you have cube point zero zero five thousand, you're going to have a million things to look through. It's helpful if everything is named. So we'll do the same thing on this side. We will select the model. We'll go to Boolean. Difference is already selected. The eyedropper tool, select the key, apply. Now I'll hide that for you. And there you go. We've cut a perfect little slot. Now let's, got to remember to do this. We'll go back to our key, get rid of that 0.15 of a millimeter. Really important that you do that. It will make your life so much easier. And there you go. There's all three parts ready to go. So I'm going to save that. Now this is all in balloon hold one right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to delete part one x delete i'm going to delete the key x delete now we have part two so i'm going to go file save as make sure you get save as it's very important you can accidentally hit save and kill yourself 
save as. Now, Blender will not let you save over items. I don't know why. I suspect it might be because I appended stuff, but I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to save this as 2A. Then i got to remember to go back in there and delete the extra ones that I don't need. But there we go. Now here, let me show you. If I select this and rotate it, this is how we're going to print it. And all of this will print perfectly now. I would put a rim, a brim around that so it keeps this part in place. Um, I, like I said, I have the bullseye fan duct. You set the, um, you change it from concentric to lines in the shell on Cura. I don't know about other slicers. Um, <clears throat> and it will print beautifully. I, 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 to me, the fan duct just changed everything. I don't, I, like I said, I almost don't even need supports anymore. With this cutting and keying and the fan duct, it makes everything easy. Saves me just like countless hours. So we'll go back to one. Now we're going to delete. Go X, delete part two. X, delete that. Now we just have the key. And we're going to go file, save as. Make sure you save as. Save that as key. And I would put a brim around this. This is still a pretty small part. It's 15 by 8 by 5 millimeters. So you want to make sure that stays to the bed. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll open recent. We'll go back to 1. So now we want to delete part 2. So we'll hit X and we're going to delete it. We're going to delete the key. We'll hit X. I'll select this. I'll hit R for rotate, 90, just to put it in position. And now that's ready to export as an STL and print. And we'll save. And we're going to save, not save as this time, because we have the other two parts in, in, in different files. We don't need them in here anymore. So we're just going to save over. Now I want to show you why cutting and keying in Blender, to me, is just so much better. I can add another cube. Let's go 10 this time. Okay, I'm going to scale in the Z. Then I'm going to S in the X. And let's hit S, scale in the Y. Okay, now that's perfectly encapsulated. Now let's say we didn't want a straight, flat cut. I'm going to hit Tab to go into the edit mode of the cube going to deselect it. I'm going to go and get a loop cut. So I'm going to make, whoops, I didn't get it. There we go. I'm going to make a loop cut here and here. All right. Now we got two loop cuts. Now if I select these two, pull it out a little bit, go back into object mode. Now So look at what I did there. Well, it's a little harder to see, but I, that's not a straight cut. You can cut things up into a million puzzle pieces and fit them all back together. This is why I like Blender over Mesh Mixer. And, and you know, if you want, you prefer Mesh Mixer, if you prefer Mesh Mixer, go ahead and use it. I just think Blender is precision, where Mesh Mixer is like an axe. It's just so much harder for me to use. I can cut things up with like a scalpel-like precision with Blender.